Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm constantly testing power supplies, DC-DC converters, AC-DC converters, batteries, all sorts of things, and it's come to my attention that I don't really have a good way to, to pull a lot of current here in my workshop. I mean, I do have these things here. So these are 50 watt resistors and they're in parallel. This is uh, one, just, you know, a single one. And yeah, these sort of work, but the thing is they kind of need active cooling or else they get way too hot, way too quick. And in fact, uh, some places on my mat are permanently scarred because of the heat these things put out. Moreover, I went to go get a couple more of these and these are now over $5 each. Uh, in fact, it's around six bucks if I wanna get one of these shipped to me. So I needed to turn to something different. Now I really like these light bulbs, these automotive light bulbs for that. Uh, these are 55 watt units and they're like a buck or two from AliExpress uh, and they also don't overheat because they're in the open air on in a car typically they're enclosed in a housing so you know it, it does work pretty well for heat dissipation by itself however this goes up to 12 volts and a lot of the power supplies like this one for example um, it can provide up to 60 volts what do of course, I leveraged my connections and built myself a PCB for them, but not just one PCB, three PCBs. Uh, so here is the explanation. So you've got these red ones here, uh, which says a 12 volt analog load. That's because it uses four 12 volt bulbs like this in parallel. So if each of these are about 55 watts, give or take, then this should be somewhere around the neighborhood of 220 watts. I also have a 24 volt analog load, and that's two of these in series, so, you know, 24 volts, but times two. So I can have a 24 volt version of this. So again, four bulbs. And I've got this black one, which is a 48 volt load, where, where all four of these are actually in series, one, two, three, four. So you can get high current at kind of whatever voltage you want, because don't forget, these bulbs are made for automotive use, so you could go up to 14 volts, maybe 15 volts a piece, and at 15 volts a piece, that makes this a 60 volt compliant board. A couple more features of these boards is that they use these screw terminals that I use on a lot of my projects. And the reason I use a screw terminal on this, I have two positives and two negatives at, at this end. And so you can either hook up your power supply or whatever you need to put a load on uh, to two terminals and use the other two terminals to link to another board and daisy chain these boards to as many as you want. Don't forget, every time you order boards from PCBWay, it can be five or 10 or 15 or whatever, and the shipping barely goes up. So always try to get more boards than you think you need. Or you can use the uh, extra terminals for four wire measurements. Another cool thing I thought is to put these 90 degree XT60 connectors. These are typically used in uh, RC vehicle applications, but they can carry quite a bit of current. So if I have, if I need to load down a battery, I can have a simple plug connection or I can have the screw terminal connection. And the last thing is that because these things will, will pull a lot of current, you know, a couple amps a piece at least, I'm using these solder terminals, spade terminals to uh, solder into the board and make a nice high current connection to the bulb, as well as allowing you to use the exact same bulbs on every one of these boards. So in principle, if you only need one board at a time, you only need to buy four bulbs. Let's get one soldered up and then we can test it out. And here we are, here's the finished product. Now, a couple of tips is that um, I just soldered directly onto the pad on the front side here. You can solder from the back underneath, but the thing is if you flood these connections with solder, the solder will wick right through and they'll clog these little tabs. Ask me how I know. So yeah, just put a little fillet on, on the back, but these things fit in there so tightly 
that it's never going to go anywhere. It's going to be it's going to be fine. It's going to have a good connection as well. Um, these XT60 connectors actually come in the default library for KiCad, so I didn't even have to make my own custom footprint. And this guy is a custom footprint from a long time ago. So yeah, next thing is you'll notice that there are three little holes in this thing. And those holes are for this. I made a nice little case for this 3D printed. Obviously the case files will be with this as well as uh, on my GitHub page if I remember. Um, and these posts, they just use the standard uh, Voron issue uh, 3x4x5 or was it 3x5x4, whatever, uh, M3 uh, heat stakes. And these are super easily installed if you get if you have one of these standard um, soldering irons um, that takes the heater cartridge there's a tool comes a little case like this with all the bits to push in those heat set inserts um, I've been liking these things more and more trying to implement them more and more um, now I'm just learning so I think these holes they might be a little tight for them they might have a little too much material um, so all that does is it creates a whole bunch of uh, sort of excess plastic on the bottom, but you can just screw right through that. It's not really that big of a deal. I have my uh, soldering iron set to 180. You can definitely go a little bit hotter if you wish, but this works just the same. There we go. And then all you do is set that on top. It snaps in. Uh, flush with the PCB. It's a little bit tight, but it's made like that. There we go. See, it sits absolutely flush on there. And then you just put in a couple of uh, M3 by 8, M3 by 6, or M3 by 10 screws in there. All right, well, the final product, and I'm, I'm all ready to test it, just need some bulbs. So I got a bunch of these. I keep the foams on them because you're really not supposed to get your finger oils all over these bulbs. And also, I didn't use anything to align the pins, so they are a little bit stiff going in, but I was kind of expecting that. It is what it is. Uh, once you go in and out a couple times, it loosens right up, and you should be good to go. That's more of a facet of these pins and not of the, uh, not of this PCB. And last one over there. Oh, yeah, these are not particularly well aligned. I'm just going to give them a little... Oop. They stick up so far off the board that it really doesn't matter. They don't need to be very precisely placed. You just kind of rock them in and they're good to go. We're gonna take the little foams off. Now, to connect it up to this Reden power supply, uh, I'm just going to use this uh, dual banana to a fork terminal adapter that I've made a long time ago. And so away we go, and like this. Uh, and then uh, these are not polarity sensitive, but I did place them in a very specific uh, polarity. And the reason for that is because these XT60s are polarity sensitive. So if, you're, if you want to plug in another device on the other end, like say another one of these, um, it's probably for the best to keep them polarity sensitive. So here's one. And here's two. Now this is the 48 volt version, so uh, I can go up quite high on this power supply. So why not just go all the way? Uh, we're going to V set to 60 volts, enter and the current set, uh, you know, 10 amps, but it won't be nearly that much. Um, careful, because this is going to be bright. 
Ooh, there we go. I can feel the heat immediately. Um, all right, so if I shield this, so we are at 60 volts, 200 watts, 3.38 uh, uh, amps going through here. There is a lot of heat, but that's the kind of thing you need to test these kinds of modules. In fact, this one can supply 18 amps. That means I would need a whole bunch more of these. Thankfully, you know, PCBWay provides. And of course, what's more fun than building one of these loads? Well, how about building two? Or six. You see, I built these all up because these are going to be shop infrastructure tools. So let's put this one uh, to the test, which is the four bulbs in parallel. So I'll be able to pull much more current, but I'll have a much lower maximum voltage. It is to be noted, however, because of the way these things work, you can link them in parallel and in series however you need. Also, it has been, uh, it is to be noted that you can actually get these bulbs in 24 volt versions. And so you can effectively double the rating on these boards if you want to. And before you say that before I came along with these bulbs, Julian Eilert already thought of it, well, you better check his podcast interview and see what he had to say about that. And here we go, set up uh, 12 volts, but I bumped up the voltage to 13.5. These guys should be able to tolerate that uh, and a 15 amp maximum contact. So here we go. So we got 12.7 amps, 170 watts here with the four in parallel. And uh, yeah, that's pretty bright. Not much voltage drop going on there. Good way to toast some wires though. And so that's it for today's video. Um, you can take these files and modify them however you want, but definitely go check in the description below and click the link, go to PCBWay and order yourself some. Um, another thing that I plan on doing on these is because the inside is hollow, uh, I'm going to probably weigh it down. I'm going to use some, some scrap uh, wheel weights or something on the inside, making sure not to short these connections um, because these things will be nice uh, desk sort of tools and these wires being so stiff kind of make it move around a lot. But yeah, I like my low uh, footprint little analog loads. Thanks for watching.